Okay, so I'm going to record this <laughs> on a device that you can hear me uh, to show, show this card that I pulled. And then I'm going to switch over to a different device that has better video to uh, work on that a little bit. I just got that reflex bag, so that's going to be fun. I don't really know, like, technical ways of anything, really. I, I just, I just fucking flow. And then I might hit that thing, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the black light makes everything look, uh, pretty trippy. Judgment. That's a good card. I was happy that I pulled this card. That looks fucking cool. And that is beautiful. Judge, judge not, or should you, should you make a judgment call? What is judging? What is that word? What are words? What, what are the true intentions? The true intent behind someone's words? The spells that they don't know, they don't realize that they're using, wielding their sword. But uh, he's Anubis. Weigh, he's weighing. Weigh your options. Balance. And then ultimately we have to make a choice. I'll read this. Judgment. Anubis. Jackal-headed god of the Egyptian underworld, looms over a crowd of waiting souls. Each will have their moment of reckoning, their lives measured against his feather of truth. A light as a feather. This card's appearance signifies that you are ripe for transformation. You stand at the threshold of a great change, yet this change awaits something before it can happen. Maybe a crucial decision on your part, or the arrival of a piece of important information. You may also need to reckon with your past before you are truly ready to move on. Judgment calls on you to open your eyes to a whole new way of looking at life. To move into an awareness of something bigger. You have the potential now to be reborn into a more meaningful existence. Will you heed this call to awaken? You have the potential now. Well, what else is there besides now? And the time is right and ripe to emit, you will know, you will know when to flow, you'll feel it in your bones. Let's see if this will work. Um... And I said, you know, I've got to go back to square one, all these people I dismissed. Mm -hmm. All these people who say the universe is made of levels, who say there are disincarnate intelligences, who say that the you know death is not simply the yawning grave. I had dismissed all those people as crybabies and sob sisters, and I said, no, you know, the point of view that I previously dismissed is apparently what's actually happening. So in a single experience, I was converted from naive rationalism, realism, reductionism to my present position, whatever it is. Really, all I've done is worked out the implications of the personal implications for me of the DMT flash, and I've also tried to create linguistic models of it. Um, so the worth of it is that it shows you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the world is made of magic. That's what the world is made of. Not natural law, 
not interlocking cause and effect, not any of these things that are normally said. The world is magic, not a little bit, 100%. Every atom from one end of this cosmos to the other is magic, magic, magic. Certain concerns just die in the first 30 seconds of the DMT flash and can never be brought back to my mind. I've seen people who I considered what I call fragile. Some people are not good candidates for the psychedelic experience because they've been damaged by life in some way. And so for them, boundaries shouldn't be dissolved because their whole challenge is to keep boundaries in place. Uh, and I remember one case particularly, a woman who I had, was a friend of mine, I really liked her, but I thought of her as fragile and to not somebody you wanted to lean on in a crisis. She smoked DMT, thrashed, moaned, rolled her eyes back, gave all the exterior symptoms of really having grabbed on. After about 10 minutes, she sat up and said, it didn't work nothing happened. I said, nothing happened. Well, you want to try again? No way. Never, ever again. And so it did work. But the personality was somehow able to seal itself off from the implications because the implications quite literally would have destroyed that person. It was a truth they weren't ready for. And I suppose it's wonderful that DMT saves you from that. I, I felt uh, I felt in danger of dying from astonishment when I did it, and I do every time I do it. I mean, I I, I don't know how they keep the lid on this stuff. I mean, I think that this is the secret that wants to be told. I think that we are, in a sense. Now, you don't have to do anything with the fact that you're hearing about it, but you have been told at this point, if you now go forward and live in your, you know, mundane stock portfolio BMW existence, it's because you're making a choice. Because you heard from Terence McKenna that there was an entirely other possibility. You don't have to avail yourself of it. But I think it's a, a moment of great import in a person's life when they are told about DMT because it's it's what everyone thinks is impossible. That's what actually what it is. Well, what I don't understand is why are the things you see years of poetry, painting, song, story, how come there's no tradition of this? How come our folkways and our art and our drama are so utterly empty of an awareness of this? I mean, this is, to my mind, actually probably the central fact of being or at least it's as important as sexuality to go from birth to the grave without ever encountering DMT is to my mind like going from birth to the grave without ever having a sexual experience it means you skated through life you never got it 